Welcome to this video on TCP SAC. My name is Chris from Packet Pioneer, and today we're going to talk about this TCP option. So go ahead and get out your copy of Wireshark and follow right along. So to start the conversation about TCP SAC, first, I just want to stress that it's very important that we understand how TCP sequence numbers work. So if you haven't done so already, go ahead and click on the TCP sequence number video that I have on my channel here and make sure you've already seen that one. So when interacting with an application, a client often sends data to the server and data comes back in the other direction. Well, when packets are in flight, sometimes what can happen is one or more packets can get lost. Now, this is what we know as packet loss. Well, rather than resending the entire stream of data after the loss point, what a server can do is indicate through acknowledgement numbers and through TCP SAC, specifically what sequence numbers went missing. So once the client receives those acknowledgements from the server, it knows exactly which sequence numbers need to be retransmitted. So let's take a closer look at exactly how this works. So here we've simplified our packet stream just a little bit, but just for purposes of conversation, each one of these streams or packets that you see here, let's just say that it contains in its payload 100 bytes of data. So as this goes along, imagine again, one of them goes missing. Okay, so to acknowledge that data, the server will initially send an acknowledgement for those first two packets that we see. Now those sequence numbers uh, will be from one to 201. So the first packet that we see there, that's one to 101, and the second one is 101 to 201. So to acknowledge both of those, the server can send back an acknowledgement number of 201, and that'll take care of both of those. However, we have a, a gap here, right? So the fourth and fifth packet that arrive at the server, it too can acknowledge those. Now these will represent sequence number 301 to 501. So the one that we have missing in the middle is what the server here wants to indicate back to the client. So it will acknowledge 201. That will be listed in Wireshark as a duplicate ACK. Well, why? Because, well, we see that ACK number a second time. The server is basically saying, hey, client, I'm good through ACK number 201. I received those first two packets. However, it can use its TCP options within that packet to indicate the selected acknowledgement left edge of 301 and the right edge of 501. So here again, the server is saying, I'm good to 201. I've received 301 to 501, but what I'm missing is this one right in the middle. So in a way it's saying, please resend 201 to 301. Now, hopefully the client gets the hint and goes ahead and sends that retransmission. But to really see how this works within Wireshark, let's go ahead and open up a trace file and really dig into it to see how it works. Okay, so here I am in this trace file. It's just a simple TCP conversation between a client and server. Uh, here we have our handshake. We can see our network round trip time, and then data begins to go in flight. So the client sends a get to the server, and then the server begins to send packets along back to the client. Well, if I look at my intelligent scroll bar over here, I can see that I have some black lines. That means there's some ugliness there from a TCP perspective. So I'm just gonna scroll down to that. And I can see in the sequence numbers coming from that server, there was a gap in sequence numbers. That's why Wireshark tells me, hey, previous segment not captured. There was a gap here. So let's go ahead and take a look at the sequence number there on that packet, or better yet, let's go to the one just before it. I'm just gonna bring up my packet details here. Gonna open up the TCP uh, header values, and I can see the sequence number of this packet, 45261. I'm transmitting 1460 bytes. That means my next starting sequence number should be 46721. All right, so just remember that, 46721. Well, the ACK coming back from the client acknowledges 46721. So we are good to packet 52. Well, the next packet that comes in, 59861. That means we are missing all sequence numbers between 46721 and 59861. This was the next packet that we see coming from the server. So the way that selective acknowledgement kicks in is let's go ahead and take, to, take a look at the acknowledgement, the next packet after this gap in sequence numbers that happens. So the client sends this back to the server. I'm good to 46721. 
This is a dupe back because we've already sent an acknowledgement for this packet or this sequence number previous. Right? So we've duplicated our ACK number. We're good to 46721. However, in this ACK, if I come down to my options and expand that out, this is where the, the client here can indicate the new data that it has received successfully. So 59861 to 61321. Hey server, we're good, we've gotten this. However, what it's indicating to the server is I have a gap of data between 46721 and 59861. So uh, we see another packet come in from the server. This one was likely just in flight on its way to us. If we take a look at the sequence number 61 to 62, uh, we can see this doesn't fill in the gap, but it was just the next one in the sequence numbers as they were flying along. Now the client says, all right, good. I'm good to 46721. However, it just increased its right edge. So it acknowledged the new packet that came in that was in flight while still indicating the gap in the sequence numbers. Okay, so we see another packet come in. We see this is TCP window full. That's fuel for another video on another time. Uh, this is another packet that was in flight. Here we can see our SAC edges, our, our left edge, right edge. We can see our right edge is growing out here. It's acknowledging new traffic as it comes in. This is still though, we're still hung up on 46721. Well, finally, this, the uh, packet that we're looking for comes along. Sequence number 46721, and then we can see the next, sec the next expected sequence number is 48181. So this fills in one of the packets that was missing in the gap that, that happened. So now the client can indicate that. Now it's going to say, all right, I'm good to 48. I got that retransmission that you sent, but I'm still only good up to here. I still have this gap. So that's how TCP selective acknowledgement works. It's a feature of TCP that both sides need to indicate in the handshake up above. Both sides need to support it. And if both sides do, then the client or server, whichever direction packets go missing in this case, can selectively acknowledge data, indicating what went missing and telling the link partner specifically what to resend. So hopefully this helps in you getting a better understanding of TCP SAC. Go ahead and send me some comments below if you have any more questions about it. And thanks for dropping by my channel.